everybody welcome back to the channel happy hump day wednesday thank you so much for tuning in today i greatly appreciate it this will be a fun one um this one uh yeah it's gonna be a fun one so thank you for all those who are tuning in today i greatly appreciate it and welcome to all my new subscribers and those who continue to tune in from week to week if you noticed this week i did have an extra video if you missed it that went up on yesterday Tuesday it was the um full review of the sew your bag uh subscription box so you all know I gave a box away um in a giveaway and then um I said I will come back in and do a full review of that box and so that video went out up yesterday so make sure you go check that out if you missed it and don't forget if you have not subscribed go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss the next upload which will be on august 1st and we all know what august 1st is it is sewing buzz so latest patterns actually in this sewing buzz i am going to include a couple things that i hauled as part of that video because i don't know when i'll be buying you know enough stuff to accumulate to show any type of haul so i'm just going to kind of throw it in because it's just a couple things i'm just going to throw it into um the sewing buzz but um, make sure you are staying tuned for that because of course we have another snd sewing chat and it will be a good another good one um but again i'm biased because i think all of the ones i've done i have enjoyed and the ones that are coming up for um, your own uh, knowledge, little housekeeping, I have them all planned for the rest of the year. Um, so yeah, I am all set and very excited about that. But stay tuned for August 1st for SND Sewing Chat along with the Sewing Buzz. You'll see who I will be chatting with as well as what we collaborated on. And that being said, the following video after August 1st on Wednesday, August 4th will be my full review, everything in regards to the pattern that the person and I collaborate on. So if you want to know what that is and all that good stuff, make sure you stay tuned for Sunday. So let's get into today's video. It is a good one. Okay. Y'all probably like, what do I have on? So I just went and took <laughs> pictures and got back um and what I'll be talking about today and so I just you know threw on my lounge uh clothes here um and um uh, and just yeah because I figured I had it on when I started recording I was like that doesn't make sense because I'm gonna be talking about stuff for the inside of this garment that you all need to see so anyway let's get into what today's video is about so today's video is all about the sewing bowl sewing bowl challenge that is um ran by uh salon michon over on instagram i will leave a link to her instagram down below as well as um the hashtag which i'll put here on the screen and so I, she's i think this she's been doing this a year now maybe I want to say it's been a year could be a little over a year I could be wrong there but I want to say it, it's been at least a year and so I remember when she was posting about it I just didn't understand the concept or the process um, of it or what it meant or how you participate and all that other good stuff and so when she announced it again this year after seeing it posted and other youtubers talk about it like I know crystal from crystal souls and stuff has done it before and so after seeing people do it i was like okay i think i got it and so when um she announced it again um earlier this month i was like okay i'm doing it i'm just gonna do it, it if i have questions i will ask her and that's exactly what i did <laughs> so so what she does is she has all of these different categories in a bowl that she will do on her instagram stories and she pulls categories out and based on those categories she pulls out is what you will be assigned now the thing i'll pop up a picture of my um categories but the thing is you can choose to do um pick from each column in a category combine all of them together be creative do what you need just think outside the box and so for me you all know i've been talking about this um over what the past year or so if you've been watching my channel um and i mentioned this before when i especially when i talk about my mood boards and stuff like that is for me to really think outside the box there are i won't say that i'm not creative 
thinking about stuff but I think I fall back on what's easy and convenient and initially when I received my category so it need to be a, a new what was it butterick a new look butterick or um simplicity pattern it had to be pastel or orange animal print um what was the other thing you could use lace you could use um I'm trying to think of my category because I didn't um I don't have it in front of me um you can use uh home decor um and then you can make uh the accessory was either a head wrap obviously a uh, head wrap um head wrap turban something like that or even um a, a face mask um or I think it was no it wasn't apron I don't think that was on mine but anyway I've, I've shown the picture here. Let me just pop over this way. I'll show, um, keep the picture up um, on this side. And so um, I was thinking, oh, this is awesome. Um, oh, pastel. If I didn't mention that, pastel was part of the color. So I was like, okay, this is awesome. This allows me to think outside the box. And that was my full intention, you guys. So I came up with like so many different things I wanted to do because I was thinking, okay, a lot of this fits into some of the projects I was going to be working on anyway. So I was like, why don't I just try to figure this out to, you know, mesh this in um, with everything, my colors, you know, all of that. And so I had came up with so many different things. I even asked um, uh, her a couple questions on it uh instagram um dm'd and just made sure i was on the right page and so you know i was and that's how i learned you don't have to use one column of the category versus the other you can mix and match do as much as you like and so because of all my hemming and hawing and you know this kind of this i don't know if you call it stagnation or whatever in that whole creative process I overthought it so much that I started running out of time. So it began to be, cause it's due July 31st. So everybody who entered the challenge, you're, you need to post by July 31st. And so, <clears throat> so with that, I began running up against time, which meant, okay, all my ideas are great, but you don't have time to execute them because a, you know, you do have a nine to five, you are working on other business ventures <laughs> and you have other things going on. And so I was like, okay, so let me just think, 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 think. I had to pull out this. I went and looked at this fabric. I've had this fabric and let me sh see if I can show you guys. It is, see it's horses. And if anybody who watches watches my channel you know I absolutely love horses um <clears throat> and I actually here's my little swatch book y'all know how I do it here it is here I bought four yards of this and this is from fabric.com as you can tell it was $3.99 a yard and I bought uh four yards of it it was on sale, I remember, for $3.99 a yard. I bought this back in 2017. So this fabric, I won't say that I considered it precious, but there are some fabrics, and I don't know if anybody else thinks like this, but there are some fabrics that I really, really like. I haven't sewn, that I have a lot of, that my, um, in my mind, when I use the fabric, I just want to use it one time. I don't need to have any leftover to make something else out of it. And so this was one of those where I was like, you know, I, whatever I made, I wanted to eat up a lot of this fabric. If I have scraps left over to do a, a head wrap or make pockets or maybe use it as a lining for something, that's something totally different because that's very small. But I didn't want like two yards left over or anything like that that's just me for certain fabrics like that that's why this stayed in my stash for so long because i just didn't know what i wanted to do with it and so the color is so how this fits into my um the colors that from the sewing bowl that i had to do this is a burnt orange and pale banana 100 percent rayon chali and um and so this here, the whole pale banana. So I looked up, and if I remember to put up the Pantone color, I looked up, cause even though I met the orange piece of it with the burnt orange that's in here, I was like, but I think this here is a pastel. 
the horses and so it did it matched i forget what pantone color it was because i looked up pantone pastels and so this at least what i can tell on the screen um that this color in here matched um that and then for me to do part of my um uh categories was animal print obviously we have animal print we have animals we have horses um and so um so yeah so this fabric is long it's five years old so it is no longer available and so the the pattern i decided to choose was is butterick it is butterick 6757 and maybe i can scoot back so i can have two things up here 6757 and i chose to do view b now a couple reasons why i chose this a because it eats up a lot of fabric i have four yards i use probably three and a half maybe maybe not as quite as much maybe three three and a quarter no, I was maybe closer to three and a half. So I knew it was going to eat it up because the actually the fabric requirements, let me just tell you, for 60 yards of fabric, oh, and that's what it was. That Chally, I remember when it was sent to me, I received a little over four yards. I ordered four yards, but I think I received just a little over because this dress um, requires four and a half yards. And the size I have is the 16 to, through 24. And the 24 bust is 46, waist is uh, 39, and the hip is 48. Well, I'm closer, I'm down to like that 44, 45 in my waist depending on um, what's going on is that it is 38 but I can uh, fall into that 37 and then hip 40 um, for 22 is a 46 so I knew size 22 would work for me so the 44 37 46 and so um, that's the size I decided to go through go uh, with for this pattern and like I said for view B because you have that bottom ruffle and um, at the bottom I knew that I, this would eat up a majority of that fabric. That was the goal. So I did view B 60. It says 60 inch wide fabric. You need four and a half yards. So that's what I did. Um, and so, and I also did this for an, another reason. So it ticked all the boxes between the fabric and the pattern, ticked all the boxes based on, you know, my sewing bowl categories. However, the other thing is because I really, really want to try sharing, 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 right? Um, and this here is just for me like an introduction and how I think all that type of gathering type look would look on me. Because um, I do love it. And I have bought several patterns, right? And, um, and I think it'll look good on me. But I just wanted to say, okay, let me see how this works for um, with this dress and how that looks on me, that whole look. And I think it looks beautiful. And so, um, yeah, this is, I, let me just start with this. Cause, did I say it was uh, Butterick 6757? Let me give you my notes on this. There's not a lot of pattern pieces. So for view B, you have the front bodice, you have the back bodice, the front skirt, the back skirt, the front ruffle, and the back ruffle. Now you also, in the sleeve, but you also have two elastic guides. You all know it doesn't matter for me if it's indie or if it is um commercial i do not use the elastic guides in the patterns um just because they never work for me I'm, i have yet to find one that actually works and so <laughs> um this was no exception because you there's a lot of places you need the elastic obviously across the bust across the back and then on the shoulders and then on the arms um and then along along the waistline. So there are, what's that? Six, five areas. One, two, three, four. No, you got the shoulders, the sleeves, the front, the back, that's six, and then the waist. So you have a lot of areas where you have to use elastic. And so, um, like I said, um, and plus another reason you want 60 wide inch fabric and you want to make sure you have enough fabric is because a majority of all the pieces for this are cut on the fold. And so, yeah, you, <laughs> you definitely need the yardage, um, for this particular fabric, uh, for this particular, um, 
um, pattern. So um, the only thing that you cut on the layer, on the single layer that you cannot cut on the fold um, is the ruffle, the front ruffle and the back ruffle. You cannot cut that on the fold. It's just too long. And so you have to, um, you have to have 60 inch wide fabric. Um, at least highly suggesting you want, unless you want to play piece and, piece and things together. And especially if, keep in mind, if you are using um, directional print fabric, which I am using directional print fabric. So you need that width and you need the length. Super duper important for this. Um, the other thing I want to say is majority of this, um, um, except for one area, which I didn't know why they didn't just do it for that area either. Um, but you are doing um, elastic casings for everything, which I, I really liked. I was like, oh, that gives such a clean finish. Now, granted, doing the elastic casing, um, how I've done it before is long time ago. It's been a while because um, typically I don't like gathers around my waist. But when I was looking at the print and looking at, you know, the design of this, I figured, okay, again, I don't use elastic guys. I wrap the elastic around me, what I think is a comfortable fit. And then I put the elastic, you know, I measure it that way and then put the elastic in. So I know it's not too, too gathered or anything like that. And I thought this one turned out great. Now, um, the thing with this that I um, did, and I'll tell you what I did for the, uh, the gathering um, at the bottom. So when I say the casing, so let me just show you the inside. Can you see that? So you use bias binding to create that casing. You fold over the top, um, five eighth inch, you double fold it over, you stitch down, then you add the um, casing, which is the bias binding. You use bias binding, you there's a line that you just uh, um, sew that down and then you just run the elastic through. Now, one of the things that I did do, especially for um, the front, is I put the pattern piece up to me and figured out how tight I wanted it. I didn't use the elastic guy and base my elastic on um, that length on you know what I came up with. I did not do that because I wasn't sure how this was gonna fit or how it you know needed to move. Um, I did that for the arms and I did it for the front, but I didn't do it for the back or the shoulders. So what ended up happening was, so when I say, Here's the shoulders, because this is not all continuous. You have the back um, with the casing, you have the front bodice with the casing, you have the sleeve with the casing at the top, and the casing at the bottom um, for both sleeves. So you, um, this is not continuous, um, which actually I appreciate and I really do like, um, because it. Uh, what happened was when I first finished it, the shoulders weren't hugging my shoulders again i'm narrow up at the top and one of the things i'm discovering as you know i continue to size down is that <clears throat> and a lot of y'all said this in my previous video from um a couple of comments i was able to watch is that oh why don't you measure your bus base your uh, bus size off your full bus and then do a full bust adjustment <sighs> you guys I, I don't want to do that and it's partly because I am spoiled. Most being larger, I had tended to gravitate towards mostly pretty much all indie patterns that drafted for a curvy, bigger bust, more rolls on the body figure. So for me to get things to fit around my bust before, all I had to do was grade between sizes and didn't have to worry about doing full bust adjustments and all this. I'm thinking perhaps my, I don't know, my ticket maybe have run out on doing that. If I'm going to start using some of these other patterns that really don't cater to a curvier body, larger bust, the rolls and everything that you have, ugh, I might have to consider doing that. I don't want to, but we, you know, that's probably something I'm just going to have to just do, right? So I say all that to say... Um, because up in here for me, um, and I said in my previous video, as I continue to, uh, lose weight and all that different type of stuff, this here upper 
part for me has always been more narrow on my body always that has never been no matter my size but as I continue to lose weight it becomes even more narrow and I have to really contend with stuff that's up here and fit up here and all of that and so this was not <laughs> sitting on my shoulders at least not snug I, I would say it would sit up there but I probably would have to keep adjusting it and I was like no that should be snug so what I was able to do because it has the casing is I just unpicked just a little bit area I took out six more inches of elastic y'all six more inches for it to lay on me the way you'll see in the pictures on both sides the back what I decided to do because it wasn't hugging as much but a part of that it was dipped and part of that was because the shoulders weren't lifted but I was like I don't know that I necessarily need to tighten this back here so what I opted to do and this is a tip for anybody who maybe you have you made something and depending on how your elastic is inserted you can do it like I did just unpick pull um tighten the elastic and sew that casing back up but what I did was just put some clear elastic on the back to draw it in even more just to see how that would work and it worked fine instead of me um I'm picking the back and drawing it in I mean either way it works it just you know it's all up to you right so yeah so that's one of the things I like to finish the arm let me just flip this inside out real quick and then I'll uh wrap up with the outside so um yeah I, I don't have my surgery yet so this was entirely french seams look at that casing I absolutely like that that's the elastic case. that's how they have you do it I love it the odd part is they didn't have you do it for the waist and I'm thinking why not they just had you you know flip it up as usual and then run the elastic through so nope I just did the casing same thing for the waist so that made sense to me um I don't I yeah I don't get why they didn't just keep that consistent throughout the whole pattern and so everything is french seam I french seamed everything the sleeves I did not french seam um again because I didn't know how that sleeve was supposed to fit on me and make sure that it was good so instead I have some um some silk it's almost like a silk twill oh it's not gonna focus there we go a silk twill I just um bind all of the the arm in that so that's how I finished that off but all the other parts of the um, sleeve are uh, French seam. Sorry about that, my camera cut off. And I even French seam the ruffle, which was very tricky to do. And where did the lace come in on this? Let me just turn this right side out and um, show you. If I didn't tell you these earrings, which is that um, orange color um, came from uh, extra by Stacy I hauled these a while back and this bracelet was already um, in my stash so let me turn this inside out so and of course my headband uh, my head wrap I did you guys I just did a video on that how I made it um, and I make them all the same and it just depends on how I want to wear and I wanted this one to be long so I can drape it like this but then I can also double wrap and build it up um, go check out that video I will leave it up in the i cards for you to see that um, the last thing I want to talk about um, from a well no let me show you where the lace comes in so this is where some of my overthinking and everything to execute what I was thinking I was going to do didn't necessarily execute and I ended up going super simple I bought a pack of lace from um Joanne Fabrics can you see that and all I did was trim the bottom of the dress with that lace so that's where the lace comes in I know that that is not very creative <laughs> but again I was like you know what I didn't you I overthought the whole process even though I was comfortable with the challenge it was like all these grandiose ideas you know it'd be great if this was like the only thing I had going on but 
I still like it nonetheless. So from a distance here, you can see this is how she looks. She is beautiful. I'm actually going to be wearing her this weekend. I have another market um, coming up and um, I was like, this would be perfect to wear. Um, this Chally is so comfortable and I like the way it looks with the headband, the jewelry and everything. So, you know, the only time I wore up to this point that you're seeing it is to take pictures, but I am wearing it this weekend um, all day actually. I'll be gone all day again. Um, and so, yeah, I am very proud of it. It looks so pretty. And because of the print, the eagle eye among you, have you noticed something? Let me just show it to you. Here she is. Can you see? Can you see? And here, here are all the the ruffles on the bottom. Oh, let me just tell you how I did this ruffle. I did, and I'll pop in a clip here. I tried this little new tunneling feature that you use some kind of string thick cording. Um, you do the zigzag stitch and then um, you do the cording and then um, you just pull it in order to create your gathers because this was so much gathering involved. I decided to give that a try and it actually worked. I liked how um, it turned out. I will link to that because I didn't come up with that. <laughs> I will link to that. Oh my gosh, what is her name on Instagram? She has a YouTube channel too. I'm going to put her name on the screen. Um, but I'll put, I'll, I think she put in her highlights. If she did, I will link to it. Um, but anyway, and her name is escaping me. But I follow her technique. I think her name is Denise. I don't know. But anyway, I um, here's her name on the screen and I will link to it down below because it worked really, really you know, there's every, everybody has different techniques and everything for doing everything. That's the joy of sewing. And so I wanted to try that because um, I remember her posting about it and I had saved it. Um, but the last thing I want to share, uh, I told you about the uh, gathers around the waist. It's all French seam, um, inside out side seams everything is french seam um i obviously when i attached the bodice to this skirt piece i didn't have to french seam it because that whole seam was being hidden by the um casing that the elastic was going to go through so didn't have to worry about that but have you all figured out what is going on here it's such a busy print maybe you notice maybe you don't yes as much as i tried this is a uh, directional print I the skirt piece is upside down horses are running up instead of down I got the bodice good I got the ruffle good and when I tell you I was when I was putting this together I painstakingly um, used my little marking tool and wrote on the wrong side of the fabric top so I always knew what was the top, what was the bottom, especially when it came to attaching the the ruffles. Now, let me tell you, when I got to, when I finished, it, it didn't dawn on me to look how it was going after I sewed, cause you sewed the ruffle on before you sewed this part to the bodice. And, but here's the thing. I don't think it would have mattered anyway, but at any rate, I didn't look at it once I finished it. But, um, I noticed once I put the, I didn't notice this time I put the dress on and I only noticed it because the bottom part of the ruffle, that bottom ruffle is not as flowy as the picture. And I was like, why does it feel like it's coming in? Cause that's not how she looks on the, the front cover. It don't feel, it don't look like it's coming in at the bottom, but that's how it was feeling. And I looked down and I noticed the horses were wrong way side up and I was like no wonder I felt like I was gathering for years at on this end and on this top I did have some slight gathering but I was like why do I have gathering because the pattern didn't mention anything about gathering the bodice because you add the elastic and as it turns out this here is the bottom and the part that was more narrow is the top and I wouldn't have had to gather as tight as I did down here. And um, yeah, it. I was like, 
oh my gosh five years and this is the mistake that you make with this fabric <laughs> i was like you know what i'm of course i'm wearing it um and i was not unpicking it obviously because i had already french seamed i cut everything down and i um for both and then i had already attached the casing and um put all that together and i was like yeah i'm not unpicking all that um we wearing this this is getting worn and so and the thing like i said that i love about it is that um as uh you know i continue to uh slim down and whatnot i can and i'm just cutting a, i just noticed a, a thread here um i can tighten up the elastic around the back around the front and on the uh sleeve so i am happy that this is not all continuous i'm happy that it is separate because there are areas i would have to tighten other areas i wouldn't but yeah i had to take six inches out of the six i couldn't believe it um but yeah and of course because i measured that around my bicep i was good with that but yeah so that is it that is my <laughs> sewing bowl challenge dress i will pop up here some videos so you can see i definitely highly highly recommend this pattern um it is again butter 6757 and yeah i do highly recommend it i think it is is such a good i think it's such a good pattern um like i said the only things i do highly recommend is that make sure that you have enough fabric um make sure it's 60 inches wide it does um it does say you can use 45 uh inch wide fabric but if you're on the larger size in that larger size range don't play with it just get 60 inches wide and especially get 60 inches wide if you're going to use a uh, directional print um and so uh yeah that is one of the things i highly recommend view a does come with a sash but i typically don't wear those anyway um but yeah that is it i absolutely enjoyed doing the sewing the sewing bowl i want to do it again this time i think now that i've gone through it now i kind of know what i'm doing and i don't think all of my over planning and overthinking and all that will come into play next time um as much it's just like okay i could you know figure this out figure that out because the thing with the sewing bowl challenge i think it really pushes you to um create something outside of the box not the typical you don't need to look just like the envelope hack it up do whatever it is you need to do um to the pattern i mean all of the bottom ruffle if you plan it good enough depending on the type of fabric you use all that could have been lace the sleeves could have been lace you know um but yeah i end up kind of reverting to an easy um execution uh because i um allow myself to run out of time um this pattern is one yes i will sew again um but we got a lot of patterns in our stash to sew up so uh, but this is one i will keep and hang on to because I would definitely want to sew it again. I actually, I really love that um, view B. And it is super easy to put together. Um, and so, yeah. And even though I don't have my serger, I would most certainly probably continue to use this type of fabric or rayon, rayon, chally, something like that. And still French seaming. Because I just think it, it just looks beautiful. I love, love, love the finishing. So that is it, everybody. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comment section below. Make sure you go check out the Sewing Bowl Challenge hashtag over on Instagram and check out um, Salami Shine's uh, Instagram page and see all of the entries, everything that everybody's doing, how they just thought outside the box and really uh, push their creativity. I didn't as much as I wanted to, but I still had fun doing it. So that is it again make sure you stay tuned for august 1st our sewing buzz as well as august 4th which will be my full review on the item that i did collaborate on with my s d sewing chat um friend there and so yeah that's it everybody i appreciate you so much for tuning in today again if you have any questions or anything um like that definitely let me know and i will get back to you as soon as i can Thanks everybody for tuning in today. You all have a blessed rest of your week and we will see you on Sunday. Bye.